So this is 6.9 day one, and we're going to be talking about water wheels. But before we do, here's the warm up for today. So um, they've done an example. We've, it's talking about co-terminal angles. So co means to share and terminal means to stop, right? If you have a terminal disease, it's going to kill you, right? We understand that. So co-terminal means co-terminal. So these two angles in this example, 120 degrees going from the x-axis to the left is 120. And then the co-terminal angle is negative 120 because I went the other direction. These are actually the same. You can think of them as the same angle, but they went around. Now you can also, another co-terminal angle would be this one where you went around twice. That's also co-terminal. But we want two angles that start in the same, have the same starting rate and the same ending rate, which means we want a positive and a negative. Notice that this one and that one, if I use the absolute value of my negative co-terminal angle, I, they always add up to 360 degrees because they make the whole circle, right? So we go this way and we stop, and then we go the rest of the way that way, and we stop and we run around the circle all the way. So that's what you're looking for. So we're starting with 20 degrees and good luck. So we should have negative 340 here and positive, and our picture has 20 here and then negative 340 going the other way. I didn't draw the rest of the sketches. 95 is just in the second quadrant. And so that's where you should be going, these end here. And then 225 is just into the third quadrant. No, actually it's halfway through the third quadrant. Halfway through the third quadrant. And so here and here. All right, so notice these two numbers at, if I take the absolute value of this negative one, always add up to 360. Again, you can also cool terminal by going around a lot, a lot, a lot, but that's not as interesting as the two pairs where what are just different directions. All right, moving on to the rest of the lesson. So we're talking today about water wheels 6.9. I think this is page, we did not talk about water wheels. We have not begun this lesson. This is our last lesson. Oh, we've, we've mentioned it. We mentioned this Ferris wheel that was half underground and half above the ground. So a water wheel is, they were to power flour mills before electricity or mostly to grind up grain to make flour or other things, corn flour, wheat flour, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So because it was using water from a stream that came off a mountain, the middle is at the ground. And that's the key of everything we're talking about today is the middle is at the ground. Okay, and half of it's a negative and half of it's positive. So that's how we're switching. Okay, so this is a designer for potential water wheel. Each of the 12 spokes of the wheel will measure one meter. Hmm, why are we choosing one meter? Because of the unit circle. We're trying to basically introduce you to the unit circle through the use of water wheels. In addition to the spokes, the designer wants to add braces to, to provide additional strength. Two potential placements for the braces are shown in the following diagrams. The brace and the spoke to which they are attached form a right angle. So here's one BC, right? That's a potential brace, and that's the other potential brace. There are 12 spokes, so you notice there are 12 spokes. Find the measures of the two angles in the diagram. So BAC and BCA in each diagram. So we're looking for this angle and that angle and this angle and that angle. And we need to find exact lengths of all the sides, not just decimals, and explain how we found them correctly and label the exact coordinates. So go ahead and figure out the central angle, the angle with A in the middle for both of those first. I'll go, well, let's pause the video and we'll see what we can find out. So pause and see what you can figure out. Probably started in degrees and wrote 30 degrees and 60 degrees, which is awesome. But we want radians now because we're moving into a radian world. And so it should be pi 6 because we have 2 pi, the whole circle, divided by 12, which is pi 6. So in this triangle, it's pi 6. And in this triangle, since I have two of them, it's 2 pi 6 or pi thirds. Okay. And then this other angle, since this is 30, that's 60, which means it's pi thirds. And since this is 60, that's 30 or pi 6 because they relate. So hopefully you have both of those. I'm going to write pi thirds over here and pi six over here. We're mostly concerned about the angle inside. 
But for question number two, find the exact lengths, not just decimal approximations, how do we do that? These are the same triangle, they're just oriented differently. So, what triangle are we dealing with? This angle is 60 degrees, and this angle is 30 degrees. What kind of triangle is that? That's our special 30, 60, 90 triangle, yes? And so, we know that this is one. How come we know that's one? Because one meter, it told me so right there. That radius, that's one meter. How, what is this short side? Because it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. No, it's, we want an exact length. What do we know? Since we recall that 30, 60, 90 triangles came from cutting half of an equilateral triangle in half, this is one half, and no, you can't use 0.5. So how do I find this side now that I know the other two? Well, I just do the Pythagorean theorem. One squared is equal to one half squared plus the missing side that I don't know. I'll call it y for no reason at all. Um, and so I end up with one minus one fourth equals y squared because one half squared is one fourth. Is that okay? So one minus one fourth is three fourths. And so y equals the square root of three over the square root of four, which is two. And so a, b in this one is one for all, both of them, a, b is one, yes. And in this one, a, c in the first, so we're doing this triangle, that's what I'm writing down right now. AC is the larger side, the square root of 3 over 2. And BC is 1 half. They switch in this one because it's oriented differently, but they're still the same numbers. So this has gotten really messy, so I need it to be cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some stuff that's in the way. I hope I don't confuse you as you watch this video. Can always back it up but there's too much stuff here so like this is in the way i'm i don't want to use 30 and i want to use radians because i'm supposed to be using radians these days so i'm going to use radians and so now that i have that i'm going to go ahead and put these numbers that i found in the triangle so this is a square root of three over two this length is one half this length is one this is one this one is one half and this one is the square root of three over two just to kind of clean it up a little bit, but it still is really messy. Question three says, and this is for number two. Question three says, label the exact coordinates of point B in each diagram. So now we want to, let me use a color I haven't used. We want to find the coordinates of this point. So X comma Y of that point. Okay, I've decided I really hate this orange color. so. I'm going to go with red, which I don't love, but that's loose purple. So I know that this is cosine of the angle, comma sine of the angle because of the stuff we knew with R and R and R is 1. But that's more complicated because I don't know what the cosine of pi 6 is. But I know something else. X, that's X. And this is Y. And so I just labeled what x was. x is the square root of 3 over 2, and y is 1 half. And that is an exact coordinate. Using the same thoughts, try to label this. Pause the video and try, and I'll be back with the answer in just a minute. So since this is x, we got 1 half here, and this is why we've got radical 3 over 2 there. And so that's pretty straightforward, I hope. It, but it's also kind of complicated. Let's see what comes next. Based on the work we just finished, try to find all of the xy coordinates for the whole circle. So we've got these two already. I don't didn't mean to do that. These two already, it was radical 3 over 2, comma 1 over 2. And this one was 1 half, comma radical 3 over 2. The way I remember that is x is bigger on the smaller triangle and therefore the bigger number goes first, first. And then over here, x is short, and so that's why it's one half.
That's how I remember, because it took me a long time to get those two right. Okay, then it wants you to finish the whole circle. So I'm going to give you two more hints and then let you figure everything else out by yourself. This is what? What's this point? Zero, one. Is it? No, it's one, zero. And how do we know? Because X is longer than Y. And then this point at the top? Zero, one. Because Y is longer than X. See, Y, X didn't go anywhere. Now find all of the other pairs. Remember, these two are going to match. And those two are going to match. Good luck. I'll be back with the answers in a moment. Okay, so we're here. And you should have all of these answers. Was it hard? So we know if we know these are the same, x is negative over here. So all that switches from these two points is x becomes negative. All that switches from these two points is x becomes negative. When I'm down here, they're both negative. This one matches with that one. That one matches with that one. Over here, y is negative. They match this way or they match that way, whichever way you want to look at it. They just match up. It's a really, really nice system. Okay, with that in mind, without using a calculator, no calculators. Find exact values, which means the square root of 3 over 2 or 1 half, positive or negative. That's the only answers. Except for the half, right? Except for this one and that one. All of the rest of them are going to be 1 half or the square root of 3 over 2. It's just a question of which one. No calculators allowed. And these two are special because they're on the axes. So see if you can figure out what those are. And remember, it's cosine of theta, comma sine of theta. So just look at the circle. You can find all the answers from that circle. Good luck. Pause your screen videos and see what you can come up with. So these are the right answers. I want, and if you look back at this circle, these angles right here, let me highlight, use the highlighter. These angles right here are the thirds. And these angles over here are the fixed. So the 7 pi thirds is not one of our angles, but it's bigger than 2 pi because it's 6 pi is over 3 would be 2 pi. This is a slightly bigger than 6. Than, and so it's here. And that's why it's the y value and radical 3 over 2 because it's fine. But that's the idea. I hope you did okay. And um, the homework is just the go so pretty straightforward and good luck to you we'll see you when you're back with your from your field trip